the Ruger SR 1911. Guys, this is what she looks like after a nice range session in the backyard, running hand loads, factory loads, and a bunch of lead round nose black powder load ups that I did. Check out that video if you're interested. We've got over 500 grounds through her right now. And this isn't the full review. We'll do a full review at 1,000 rounds, but this is the 500 round update of the Ruger SR 1911. She looks just as good dirty as she does clean. Let's get her inside, let's get her cleaned up, and let's get talking about my impressions of this outstanding handgun. We're going to do a quick field strip here and evaluate the inside of the pistol. I'm going to strip the magazine, make sure it's clear, clear the chamber. And we're going to start by decocking the hammer if I can get the grip safety disengaged. We're going to use the barrel bushing, plastic uh, bushing wrench, excuse me, uh, to engage the barrel bushing uh, here that Ruger provides with their SR1911s. And just ease that plug on out of there. Make sure you don't send it shooting across the room. Not that I would have personal experience with that. Cock the hammer, move it back to the takedown notch, pull it right out. You see it's extremely easy on this gun. It was a little bit tight out of the box, but uh, not bad now after 600 plus rounds. See the frame there? Pointing out that uh, it has a continuous slide rail. It is not milled through, uh, which is a, a really nice feature, especially for a, a cost-effective gun. Lower the hammer there just to relieve the tension on the spring and not let it drop on the frame. Standard field strip, blue spring, short guide rod. It's GI components. Barrel bushing, really tight fit, sometimes can be a, a little bit of a fiddle to get it out. It's made from the same bar stock as I understand it as the barrel, so uh, nice homogeneous mass there, uh, help keep it accurate. Barrel looks good, slide looks great, and uh, you see that oversized ejection port there, great for getting all sorts of casings out of it, preventing any sorts of stove pipes or misfeeds. All right, we're going to remove the back plate, get the firing pin, firing pin spring, and extractor out. I'm going to use the tip of a 30 out 6 here. Just push in on the firing pin all the way and push down. Now you can remove it. Again, watch your hand there so you can uh, capture the firing pin. It's under spring tension. Just go ahead and pull that out. It is a Series 70 design, but uh, improved safety with a uh, slightly stronger firing pin spring and a uh, titanium firing pin. Come from the front, push your extractor back using, again, the tip of a 30 out 6 there, but you can use a punch, whatever you have handy, a pen. Extractor looks great. Really no wear after 600 rounds. Uh, and there you go, strip slide. 
Going to move things out of the way here so we can get a nice little organizational look at the firearm. Field strip, not much to it. Take a look at the barrel here. Not really any excessive wear. Uh, pretty standard for what you'd expect for 600 rounds. A little bit dirty, but um, rifling looks great after a lot of full metal jacket, jacket hollow point, and lead round nose. Pointing out there, there's a little bit of uh, wear apparent at the front where the barrel bushing engages. Same on the inside of the barrel bushing itself, but really not an issue at all. It's actually standard break-in. Take a look at the uh, firing pin, or excuse me, the action spring plug there. Looks good, no wear. Really all it does is travel back and forth. There's no wear points on it. Extractor looks great. Steel case ammo, brass case ammo, hand loads, black powder, all of that. Nothing's affected it. It's in fantastic shape. Firing pin spring. Go ahead and uh, pull it off. Yep, there we go. And uh, taking a look at the firing pin there, a little bit dirty, but it's titanium firing pin, lighter weight, inertia drop safe, or excuse me, drop safe. It won't be able to build inertia to uh, set off a cartridge. Uh, I'm going to take a look at the hammer now. A little bit of wear, a lot of dry fire practice out of this gun right now. You can see the extractor there too, but really no excessive wear. Um, a lot of handling, a lot of shooting, a lot of dry fire, and it's still not showing any issues. Strong magazine release, keep you from in a inadvertently dropping the mag, but it is drop free. So when you do want to get it out of there, it will come straight out. Oversized uh, thumb safety. Uh, the grip safety is really nice, oversized, big beaver tail, but it is a little bit radley. Um, that can be fixed easily by uh, increasing tension by bending the uh, sear and uh, grip safety spring. Nice fit, good checkering on the flat back strap and main spring housing. Pointing out here the uh, polished feed ramp as well as the rough interior of the MIM frame. It could be polished up, but um, it's unnecessary because nothing that's rough in there actually has any mechanical contact with anything else. It's just unfinished area. All right, we're going to reassemble here. Press the extractor in, make sure you line up with the groove. If not, you're going to have to fiddle with it. Uh, make sure when you reassemble your firing pin spring onto your firing pin, you use the tapered end and squish it down over the, uh, the larger portion there of the firing pin. Insert it partially. Get your back plate started. And once you've got it started, just use the tip of your punch, your bullet, your pen, whatever you're using to uh, get that firing pin down below it. And it'll slide right up like you saw there. Yep, and you'll click into place. Search your barrel from the front with the link down. It'll lock in, then you'll put your barrel bushing in. Really guys, there's nothing different with this than simply assembling a uh, standard USGI 1911. You've just got all the benefits of it being a modernized 1911, uh, CNC machined, MIM frame, and uh, Ruger quality at a great price. Really great value with this firearm. Really impressed with it. We'll get the slide back on the frame here. Nice, easy fit and silky smooth, which is awesome. Get the slide stop back in. Make sure that barrel link is in line with the hole. Prevent from... Uh, Get your idiot mark there on the frame by just pressing straight through on the detent. And I won't need the uh, barrel bushing wrench here. We'll just use our hands. Push down, get it started, and click into place. There we go. Couple dry fires there to confirm function. And we are back together. Inside and out. Looks great after 600 rounds. All right, boys and girls, before we wrap up this video and uh, close out my initial impressions and the uh, flawless report of how this pistol performed, again, 600 rounds of lots of mixed ammunition, hand loads, black powder hand loads, factory ball ranging from 230 grain Talamo range fodder all the way up to uh, Gecko, uh, Winchester ball, uh, Remington ball, etc. A uh, big mix of ammunition in there in that 600 rounds. And really, 
zero malfunctions, zero issues across all sorts of power levels, and the wear and tear on the handgun has been great. I have been wearing this handgun every time I carry, which is pretty much any time I leave the house, except for when I'm going to work where I, I can't really practically carry, of course. Um, so, you know, this, uh, this handgun has done exceptionally well. Granted, time and round count will tell, and you will get a thousand and several thousand round update on the handgun, but I'm going to use the uh, handy little 30-06 pointer this evening to, uh, to point out a few things that I think make this handgun really an exceptional buy. Uh, so it is, again, a Series 70 pattern design. And what they've done to increase the safety, the drop safety of this firearm as a Series 70 pistol is the internal components uh, regarding the firing pin spring and the firing pin itself are one, the spring is a higher tension than standard, and two, you have a high strength, lightweight titanium firing pin, which will greatly reduce the chances that inertia can build enough to detonate a cartridge should the firearm be dropped on the butt or rear of the slide or the muzzle. So, that being said, we're going to go ahead and start pointing things out on this fantastic firearm. First things first, I want to point out the Novak sights. Now these are not night sights and I think if Ruger offered an option to upgrade to these for maybe 50, 60, 75 dollars more, it absolutely would sell amazingly. Perhaps they have done that for a distributor. I have not been aware of that. Since the standard models were released in 2011, uh, We've also seen lightweight alloy frame commanders. We've seen target models, hunting models, uh, dealer exclusives, uh, distributor exclusives, I should say. So all based on the standard SR 1911 platform, which at its heart is a standard 1911, 1911A1. Uh, A1 being more correct because we have the scalloping on the frame, uh, but we do have a, back, a flat back strap here. Really um, I will say that your highlights of improved features, again, are going to be your sights, your enhanced beaver tail grip safety, your over-travel adjustable aluminum skeletonized trigger. That's a mouthful right there. And, of course, uh, your lightweight hammer and lightweight firing pin with plenty of spring pressure to one, keep it safe, and two, keep lock time very low, but provide extremely reliable ignition on that primer. Uh, one thing that 1911 snobs or people who are simply observant of the way Ruger does things is we'll notice there is no roll marking on this slide or on the barrel hood, or the chamber area here. This is a laser etched image of the Ruger Phoenix. In the right light, it looks great. In the wrong light, it looks faint. Uh, if you wanted to polish that off, if you wanted to reprofile that, whatever you want to do to the slide, that Ruger Phoenix is not going to stay on there. Likewise, the 45 auto labeling on the barrel hood will not hold up to a lot of polishing either. Uh, now, this is a detriment in that if you like the way that a firearm is labeled, both for its chambering as well as any logoing or uh, propaganda you like printed on the side of your firearm, uh, that can be a detriment. However, when looked at from perspective that this is not roll marked on the barrel hood, that means that no material has been offset. So the chamber has not been oblonged in any way, shape, or form by the chamber marking process. Well, what does that mean? A lot of people say, well, how much could it really be offset? If you start to study the 1911, you start to study a little bit about how the big name custom manufacturers and, and custom builders put together a 1911, roll stamping this barrel can mean a lot in that how that brass operates to that slightly off chamber. And it can lead to, in some situations, a reliability issue. That can lead to, in some situations, an accuracy issue with consistency. 
Again, this is simply a production class 1911. However, this may be a cost-saving measure, but in a way, this is also a reliability and accuracy enhancing measure. So, whether Ruger was purposeful in trying to, do, to add that benefit to their production gun or not, it is there and is something to be aware of that makes this a little bit special when it comes to a lot of the 1911s out on the market. Unlike Rugers of the past, uh, if you get bored at camp, you will read your firearm pretty quickly. So there's not a lot printed. In fact, you're looking at the side that has the most printed on it. We've got Prescott, Arizona, Ruger SR 1911, and the serial number. The other side simply has Ruger, made in the USA again laser etched. It does feel rough to the touch, but it looks good and it's been done well. Again, if you want to have a more sanitized firearm, you can take that off very easily. Another highlight of feature, of course, is going to be the enhanced safety lever, which is a great size. The uh, magazine release is well textured, well checkered here, but it's not terrible and it is positive retention. So good on Ruger for that. Um, easy to bungle up something that simple uh, if it's overlooked. The grip safety, a little loose, a uh, little bit rattly side to side, a little bit of adjustment on the sear spring, the safety spring, the, uh, the tri piece that is inside the grip here will absolutely adjust that. I haven't really found a need to do anything with it. It isn't too noisy, um, but if that does bother you, you can adjust that. Again, a Series 70 style 1911, so any adjustments that you want to make to it or any extra parts, anything that you want to add, uh, Series 70 design, very, very much available. Uh, well established on the market for quite a long time, so any modifications you're looking to make it absolutely can uh, accept those, whether they need to be hand fitted or they are drop in. Other than that, uh, it's really just comes down to the details, guys, of why I think that this 1911 is an exceptional buy for uh, 700 to 800 dollars. Uh, this standard model is a really great buy just because of the feature sets. It is a handsome handgun. It is not overly flared. Uh, it is good looking. You've got Ruger stainless steel. Um, you've got cost savings where cost savings are permissible in that uh, the component doesn't have to be perfect, such as the inside of the frame. The inside of the frame doesn't have to be perfectly smoothed out. It's nice if it is. It's something you can do later. But this frame saves money and keeps this gun instead of it being a forged or a stamped gun, or excuse me, not stamped, but milled, it's a mimmed gun. And that saves it from becoming a $1,100, $1,200 $1, production 1911. So really, you've got to just consider what you're getting for the money. And what you are getting for the money is an exceptional handgun. You're getting a seven and an eight round magazine with the gun. Uh, it takes all standard 1911 magazines. It's Series 70 compatible. It is extremely well designed. It is extremely reliable and well put together. The barrel is very accurate. In fact, this handgun, of course, is more accurate than I am. Uh, once you learn it, once you tune the trigger to yourself, uh, what fun fact, the manual suggests not to, to adjust the trigger. Probably for lawyer or other strange reasons unbeknown to me. Um, but uh, they are... They are recommending you not adjust that. But um, other than that, it's a really fantastic handgun. Uh, I just can't sing its praises enough. You know, I really don't put anything in front of the camera that I don't like or I haven't researched myself and found that is a good bet to put some money down the line with. Uh, really, when it comes down to these handguns uh, or anything, shotguns, rifles, any type of firearm... I, of course, do my homework just like you are. It's probably how you found this video if you're not a subscriber already. And just learning about the firearm, 
finding out what makes the most sense for you as far as the price point you're looking for, as far as reliability, general performance of the handgun, etc., or firearm, it all comes down to what is the value. And value doesn't mean cheap. It means what kind of value are you looking for in your purchase. The Ruger SR 1911 has high value. I really don't review anything that doesn't have high value because I don't buy anything that doesn't have high value. There are a few things that I don't have super positive opinions on, but I cannot fault because those are second type opinions. They are not first type, whereas in first type are based on facts sec and, and are objective. Second type are subjective and based on simple likes and uh, personality or uh, the nuance of what it is to be an individual, really. <laughs> so all in all, fantastic firearm, can't praise it enough, handling is exceptional. Uh, you saw in the detail field strip me go over a few things, uh, really just a quick review. Uh, I don't know what else to say besides 600 rounds of 45 ACP of all different power levels. Uh, black powder loads ran perfectly fine. Lead round nose, a plenty of those. Uh, full metal jacket, XTP, 200 grain hollow points, 230 grain hollow points. Uh, we've got the Winchester SXZ45 there, which is basically a rebranded Black Talon uh, sitting below the firearm right now. So really, it's just plain good. If you're thinking about buying one or you want vindication because you already bought one, don't worry, you made a good choice or you are making a good choice. If you're looking for a 1911, you don't want it to be standard GI, you want it to be something a little bit uh, different, maybe a little bit more modernized, but you want that really nice trigger, that Series 70 compatibility, so you don't really have to shop around for parts uh, and get a lot of hand fit done to a lot of the internal components. This is the firearm for you, and it comes in well under $1,000. So not going to break the bank on it at all. If you like this video, guys, please hit like. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you'd like to stay tuned for more videos like it. And of course, as always, God bless. Keep your powder dry. And I will see you in the next video.